All right, lads, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a look at the AMX 30 Super, the long forgotten premium of the French tech tree. I have two main issues with this tank. The first is that after the recent battery rating changes, this thing is now battery rating 9.3. And the second is, of course, that it's French. All jokes aside, though, with the huge amount of premium vehicles available in War Thunder now, especially at top tier, how Gaijin has the nerve to sell this thing for $60 still and have it at battery rating 9.3. I'm not entirely sure, but as you can tell from my tone of voice, I strongly recommend no one buys this tank. So let's start off with the basics. Like a lot of the Rank 6 premiums from several nations, such as the XM1 and the Leopard 1A5 in the Swedish tech tree, the AMX30 Super is a Rank 6 battle rating at 9.3 vehicle. Because of its battle rating, it now faces pretty much exclusive 10.0 tanks. Down tiers are very rare, I have had one or two. But in the vast majority of games you get put in, it's going to feel like you're the small kid at a playground that has a particularly nasty bully. We have a base RP modifier of 2.2 and a base silver line modifier of 1.95. This is identical to the premium Leopard 1A5 in the Swedish tech tree. Compared to the XM1, we have a better RP modifier but a significantly lower silver line modifier. And compared to the old meta premium, the Leopard A1A1 L44, we have both a lower premium and silver line modifier. Compared to the much newer French premium, the VBCI-2, we have the exact same RP modifier of 2.2, but we do have a better silver line modifier, with the new French light tank only giving us 1.65. So while both French tanks will equally allow you to grind out the pretty awful French Tetri at a similar pace, you will earn much more money with the AMX 30 Super. Granted, you can actually get kills or do anything of use, that is. For those wanting an incredibly well-trained French crew, you're going to have to fork out 970,000 silver lines for the expert quality and 2,100 golden eagles for the ace quality. There are many issues with this tank. It compares poorly in all aspects of tank design. It's quite slow for a modern top tier premium. Its firepower is rather underwhelming, especially its gun handling, and it lacks even spaced and composite armor, still relying on the old rolled homogenous armor schemes. So is the AMX-30 Super completely out of the meta, or like the A1A1L44, does it still have some life left in it? We may as well start this review with the really only real positive of this tank, and that is the mobility. And even then, it's still pretty mediocre compared to many other premiums. The tank has a power that produces 850 horsepower. It weighs 36.5 tons, which gives it a power to weight ratio of 23.3 horsepower per ton. Now, compared to the Leopard L44, which I mentioned in the introduction, that only has a power to weight ratio of 19.3 which is quite a big chunk less, and the AMX-30 does have noticeably better acceleration off the line. Another premium at battery rating 9.3 though is the XM1 in the American tech tree. That thing rocks up with a power to weight ratio of 28.9 horsepower per ton. The XM1 is basically the drift king of War Thunder, and the AMX-30 in this analogy is that Sean guy from Tokyo Drift that totals a car on his first race. Yes, I have just watched that film, and yes, it is still a banger. The Super can also reach a top speed of 65km per hour going forwards and 28km per hour in reverse. Out of respect for the French here, I have not made a surrender or retreat joke, but I want to assure my listeners, it was still on my mind. Moving swiftly on from French mediocrity to downright French incompetence. And that is the only real word I have for the layout of this tank. This is the nation after all that I decided... Gun stabilizers weren't necessary, we can do without them. Every other nation on the planet making tanks is using gun stabilizers. Not us French though, we're special and unique. Moving on from my French bullying tactics, the upper front of plate of this tank is still rolled homogenous armor, featuring no spaced or composite armor designs. The upper front of plate though is surprisingly effective. It's 79mm thick and sloped at 68 degrees giving it overall an effective thickness just shy of 8 inches, around 180mm effective thickness, which to be honest is quite respectable. 
It makes the front of the tank proof against large caliber auto cannons such as the BMP2's gun, but most contemporary main battle tanks will have no issue cleaving through it. Like the Leopard 1 tank, the AMX-30 is an early generation main battle tank, still using the World War II style turret. These turrets narrow towards the gun breech and then have a large gun mantlet covering the weaker front of the turret. This design is nowhere near as strong as the late Cold War designs which featured pretty much a fully armoured turret with a small hole for the gun and that is shown in game. The turret armour is significantly weaker around the turret than it is the hull which is really the other way around that, that is desirable really. You don't want a strong hull but a weak turret. It gives you no tactical ability really, you can't go hull down. Guess you could go hull up if you could roll the tank over but quite a niche playstyle in War Thunder I think you'll admit. The other gaping weak spot is on top of the tank, basically the Eiffel Tower of the French tech tree, a huge commander's cupola. Any tank with APHE or any sort of chemical round will be able to splash you here and probably kill all of the crew members as well as setting off the ammunition. And that's because the French designers strike once again and they decided to throw ammunition basically everywhere next to the driver, back of the turret and a nice juicy ready rack at the feet of the loader. This layout is a huge negative, as every incoming round is pretty much either going to turn your crew into paper mache, completely disable the gun and the turret ring, or hit the ammunition and go up like the Bretan at Mers El Kabir. To reduce the risk of a serious emotional event, I'd recommend only taking 22 rounds of ammunition into a battle. This at least removes the ammunition stored in the hull of the vehicle, just bear in mind that we still have the incredibly large ammo rack in the rear of the bustle. And bear in mind, this is not a blowout panel fitted tank. A AP FSDS round that penetrates the front of your turret is going to kill the crew members. And then those shards are going to go into that ammunition and detonate the tank. The AMX-30 Super probably has the highest one shot kill death count in the game. Purely because of this ammunition placement. Basically any round that penetrates the turret is also going to ammo rack you. Basically just a rolling death trap really. If we take a quick look at the armor analyzer, even the short rod penetrator 3BM25 round, fired by the battery rating 8.7 premium the T55 AM1, can penetrate anywhere on this tank at ranges below 500 meters. The same round against the XM1, another tank that is generally considered to be have poor armor, and we can see from this image that at least the turret cheeks are immune at 500 meters, at least giving you some little bit of protection. So the French concept of having pretty bad armor, as well as having terrible ammunition placement, it's not looking great for our little French premium so far. And things aren't going to get any better with the firepower section. Now I'll be honest, the gun and main ammunition of this tank isn't too bad to be honest, but the absolute worst thing in my opinion it is just the turret traverse rate and the vertical aiming speed. It feels like you're playing a World War II tank basically. It's like playing a heavy tank even though you look and feel like a medium. You just can't get that gun swung around quick enough to get onto a target. I've had several deaths because I just couldn't get that turret swung around fast enough. This is quite a common issue for several premiums in War Thunder, especially the T-72 terms. But that really isn't that much of an issue for that tank because it's more of a passive second line vehicle where you kind of stay with your teammates and basically just kill them through Soviet bias. The AMX-30 Super on the other hand is meant to be played and as a rather aggressive kind of scout tank that goes in and shoots people up and then retreats and relocates. But you can't really do that with your poor gun handling. You almost have to play it like the old AMX-30s which lack a gun stabilizer. You kind of have to come to a stop and then really think about trying to get that gun on target. This might just be a skill issue on my part, but it really does feel like an eternity to actually get the gun where you want to bloody point it. Anyway, this is armed with the 105mm CN F1 cannon. We can carry 50 rounds in total, but as I said earlier, just take 22 into a battle. The base reload is 8.7 seconds, but that drops down to 6.7 seconds with a fully aced crew. Our turret traverse can have a maximum rate with an ace crew at 30 degrees per second. I don't really know how crew training affects a electronically driven turret speed, but this is War Thunder so we can't really question it. But the real killer, as I've said, is the vertical targeting speed, which is only 5.5 degrees per second. 
This is made to look much worse when we compare it with the XM1's 25.5 degrees per second. And that's the point that I'm really trying to make with this tank. If you've ever played the XM1, you know that you can just drive around a corner and you can get your turret pointed where you want it and shoot pretty much anybody as, seen, as soon as you see them. With the AMX30 Super though, because the turret traverse and gun elevation is so bad, you just can't snap shots that quickly. So you're always doubting yourself. As I said, could be a personal skill issue, but I'm a fairly average player, if not slightly above average. So if I'm struggling it, then you may also struggle with it. If that isn't too arrogant to say, I don't really think it is. It's just a tank which you would assume would be a kind of aggressive tank, but it lacks the, act the actual gun handling to do it. Carrying on with the review and not getting a sidetrack though, the gunner sight has an 8x zoom as standard, which has an optional 12x zoom. This is quite zoomed in, so on close urban maps you may get tunnel vision. We also get a first generation thermal imager for the gunner sight, but don't get anything for the driver and commander. We also carry 16 76mm smoke grenades, which fire two at a time, giving us eight bursts of smoke. We also have quite an eclectic collection of main gun ammunition. We have a heat round, that's right heat, not heat of fess. A pretty redundant type of ammunition at this battle rating, as unlike its bigger brother, the heat of fess rounds, these things travel quite a lot slower and generally just aren't as effective in general. We also have a high explosive shell as well as a smoke round. And then finally for the main workhorse of this tank, we have the OFL 105 F1. Contrary to the 3BM25 that we spoke about earlier, this thing is a long rod penetrator. And this thing is certainly a shower, not a grower. It has 361mm of penetration against flat armour, but against the more important 60 degree angle penetration, you could only manage 207mm of pen at 100 meters. While this certainly dunks on the XM1's main round, the M735, which can only manage 164, the DM13 of the L44 with its 225mm and the DM33 of the Leopard 1A5 in the Swedish tech tree with its 234mm. In general, I feel like the F1, it has decent penetration. It's kind of a bit hit and miss when it comes to post pen damage. It doesn't seem to produce a load of like fragments. I've had some games where it does a lot of damage and I've had some games where it just kind of does nothing. I think it's very dependent on the armor of the vehicle you're shooting at, even more so than regular rounds. Against lightly armored tanks, this thin round basically does no damage, so it might actually be worth carrying some of those heat rounds. I am stubborn though, and generally just take 22 rounds of the Sabo into battle. But your mileage may vary. A lot of people actually take smoke shells. I never really saw the point of it, especially considering we have 16 smoke grenades. All right, so in terms of lineups, this is of course a 9.3 vehicle, and I would keep it at 9.3. France actually doesn't have any 10.0 tanks. It does have a 9.7, the AMX 40, but I don't think it's worth taking one 9.7 into your lineup. I'd rather just stick at 9.3 and have quite a large lineup. I also have the AMX 32 105. This is of course, well, it basically uses the exact same gun as the AMX 32 Super. We also have the regular AMX 32 with its 120mm cannon. It has a little bit better firepower from its main Sable round, but it still has a pretty poor armor layout as well as mediocre mobility. I also use the SK-105A2. This is actually a pretty decent vehicle despite being unstabilized. Very high power fin round and a 4 second reload. Very very powerful in a static position. If you're lucky enough to own the VBCI-2, the new French light tank premium, you could also take that into this lineup because it is also battery rating 9.3. I also bring along the Mephisto. This has been nerfed significantly since the missile guidance changes. This thing is quite hard to aim, especially at longer range now. It is 8.7, but I still find its high pen missiles are still useful. For air defense, you can bring along the Santal, the Mistral firing wheelie boy at 9.3. I again don't have that unlocked at the minute, so I still rock the AMX-30 DCA. France also lacks any decent cast planes at 9.3. I guess you could take the F-100, but that doesn't have a CCIP. We can bring along both of the Gazelle helicopters, which are fantastic with their hot missiles. 
They are a little bit limited in terms of their range, but they are still pretty powerful. The M variant is better at 9.3 as it is, allows you to bring 4 missiles, whereas the F Gazelle can only carry 2. Overall though, this lineup isn't really that great. I don't really enjoy playing it that much, mainly because we get constant up tiers up to 10.0 and 9.7. While they're better player than me, probably could make this work. I personally, a average War Thunder player, just don't have fun playing it. And that's pretty much that we have to cover about the AMX30 Super. It does have a coaxially mounted 50 caliber. For what good that does, not really in my opinion. We also have two fire extinguishers on the front of the tank. I guess that's kind of cool. We also have a extension on the back of the turret, which I guess contains the baguettes of the troops. I don't know. But anyway, this tank, in my opinion, it's just completely dead in the meta, if we're going to be honest. It used to be unique in the French tech tree, being the only tank that had a stabilizer and you had to pay for it. Typical Gaijin uh, business practice. Anyway, though, those, long, those days are long gone now. We have other tanks like the AMX-30-105 and the regular AMX-30, both of which have stabilizers and similar firepower. But to be completely honest with you, I don't think the AMX-30 Super or the VBCI-2 is a fantastic premium. The French tech tree in general, while I will actually say that it is worth grinding out, though the clerks are good, they have fantastic cast planes as well with the Mirages. It's just an absolute grind to get there. It's a real pain in the balls. There's just no good premiums to get up to top tier France. I guess the French rank 4 premiums are pretty good with stuff like the Sommoir and the AMX-13 S11. But I don't really like any of the rank 6s. The VBCI is incredibly situational. It would be good if it had ATGMs or something like that to give you some sort of bite. And for the AMX-30 Super, it just doesn't really excel in anything. You basically just have to sit at the back of the map and snipe people really. You have good acceleration and top speed, but you can't really use it effectively because of that poor gun handling. And you can't really brawl because you don't have the armor for it. You also have terrible ammunition positioning, which basically leads to you being one hit killed pretty much any time you get shot in the turret. But as I'm sure you probably all know what I'm about to say, I wouldn't recommend buying this tank. It's $60. You can buy way better premiums for that. You can also buy a lot better real life things for that. I bought a $60 welding helmet today. And while I did buy this tank back in the day when it actually was pretty good compared to other vehicles in War Thunder, with the changing meta and the recent battle rating changes, this tank, the AMX-30 Super, isn't efficient to grind, isn't really profitable to play, and more importantly, it isn't even fun to drive around in. Maybe I'm wrong though lads, let me know in the comments if you think I'm a stupid British person who is stubborn and should keep his mouth shut. Anyway lads, thanks for watching, I'll see you later. Hey lads, if you made it this far into the video, then thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I have a whole load of other content on my channel, including tutorials and other vehicle reviews. So why not give them a watch? And if you like them, please do consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching though, boys. I've been Sarko and I'll see you in the next video.